Little known fact, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was originally also the name for BBC's Planet Earth. First trip to New York? Yes. Anything edible in there? No. Livestock? Let's get that fixed. Um, no. Let me take a look. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is another foray into the world of Harry Potter, this time without Harry Potter. It's been 15 years since the first Potter movie made its way to the big screens. Is it worth another visit? Here's five things you might want to know about Fantastic Beasts. Let's just get it right out there. I had a really good time with this movie. I like expanded universes. There's something even better than a sequel for me when you can go into the same universe and tell a completely different story, and this movie does, does it very well. One of the main reasons, Eddie Redmayne. He is so good in this. He's just so personable, so likable, and he plays the character in an interesting and unique way that you really buy that this is a real person in this real world. And he's surrounded by great performances around him as well. And this was a tricky task to pull off, right? Because you're going back into this universe where you already fell in love with you know, Harry Potter and his friends and Ronald Weasley and Hermione Granger and Hagrid. And so you've got to kind of build a new universe of people that you're going to love just as much. And I think Eddie Redmayne is probably a big reason that you will like these people too. But it's not just the humans I loved. In fact, I love the animals more. I mean, they are in the title, The Fantastic Beasts. It's kind of what it's about and they're used really well here. Not only that, there's so much imagination here. I've always loved that about the Harry Potter movies, movies, even when the story wasn't working all that well. I could count on a little bit of imagination and thinking of something in a clever new way. But here, instead of it being like spells and potions and trickery, it's unique characteristics of animals and who they are and what they do and how they work in the world. I find it magical. I find it wonderful. and I think it really works here. I also think it's important to say I had a really good time. I laughed a lot. This movie is really funny and funny in all the right ways. There's a character in this, and I don't want to give too much away, whose primary purpose I think is comic relief, and he does it supremely well. Here's the interesting thing. Because he's so good at genuine comic relief, it also works on the sentimental side, and you buy into his character in that way as well. That one-two punch of those laughs and also connecting to the character, I think serves the movie really well. Now, I want to be careful uh, and offer a little bit of a warning here because I've been talking about the imagination and the magical beauty of it and the humor of it. This movie is also really dark, more so than even the last few Harry Potter movies, I think. There's stuff in here about abuse, about rage. There are moments in this movie that play more like a horror movie than a Harry Potter movie, and I'm not making that up. So just fair warning, it does get a little dark here, even amongst the fun that you're having. I guess the one negative thing I would say about this movie, and it's kind of consistent throughout, I think the metaphors in this are a little bit forced. Now, I love a great metaphor, and I love it when it backs up a message or a theme that the movie has. And I'm not saying these are bad messages or themes. In fact, I really like the themes in this movie and what it's saying. There's just something about a metaphor that's so on the nose, like characters make specific statements that really drive home what we already know. And it's like, yeah, we get it. We get what you're really talking about here and that you're kind of case. It'd be as if like X-Men, you know, got really explicit with, you know, the, the racial angle or something like that with what the character said. I felt like there was a lot of that here and it did take me out of the movie just a bit. <laughs> Overall though, I really loved Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I had a great time. It's really fun. And even though it's dark, it ends in a place that I really enjoyed. And I think you might have a good time with it. I gave it a solid B+. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. If you want to know more uh, about what goes on here or connect deeper, feel free to. Uh, if you click the info button up here, you can find other reviews, how to support the channel, that kind of stuff. And if you search for my name on social media, Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R, I'd love to chat more about movies 
and such there. You can also follow the podcast, subscribe to it. It's called Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. We do that weekly, hang out, talk about movies, pop culture, whatever else is on our minds. We'd love to have you join us there. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify my choice. What is the best movie ever that features mythical creatures or magical creatures? There are a lot of them and a lot of good ones that you can probably think of. For me, I'm going to have to go with the obvious one because I just have to have the strength of my character. I mean, the day may come when the courage of this man fails, but it is not this day. Take a guess at mine in the comments and leave your choice there as well. As always, first person to get my right does get a point. And here's five extra seconds to hit subscribe so you never miss another review. Click the logo right down in this corner.